Hello, this is Justin Grover with Adobe Product Management. Um, over the past few days and weeks, we've, we've had a lot of, uh, we've heard a lot of comments about uh, iOS 9 and content blocking. And uh, we've posted a number of blog, blog posts on the subject and uh, trying to give everybody all the insight that they need. What I want to do today is I want to show you a couple of strategies you can use to identify the impact of, of uh, content blocking on iOS 9 um, in Safari and uh, hopefully to help you either uh, identify problems or kind of put, put your organization at ease. Um, what, what we'll do is we'll, do, we'll follow two strategies. The first one is um, go using the anomaly detection feature in, in Adobe Analytics. And then the second one, we will use an analysis workspace to put together a custom, uh, a custom solution here to, to measure or to, to estimate the, the impact on it. Um, so first, one, first off, we're going to use the anomaly detection report. Um, you can find the anomaly detection report in view all reports, site metrics, and then anomaly detection. And when you do that to, to uh, look at the iOS 9 traffic, you're going to want to create a segment that is iOS Safari. Um, and the blog post that we have linked to in the description will show you uh, exactly what the definition of that is. And then you'll want to go ahead and select the metric of occurrences, unique visitors, page views, and visits. Um, and then um, we should probably give it a pretty good training window and, and, and a pretty good view period. And so what, what this does is this goes through, looks at the trend of the data, the trend of occurrences, which is the same as hits, uh, unique visitors, page views, and visits, and tries to estimate that based on on different seasonality trends that it sees. And so what we'll, what we'll be able to do is, is estimate what the iOS traffic should have been, and if there is something that is causing a significant uh, drop in that traffic, it should be seen here. And so if we take a look at occurrences, we have a set of confidence bands um, that, that fairly closely follow uh, what we would expect the metric to be, and then you know sometimes they're a little bit different, sometimes you know they're kind of off and whatnot. But if if we were to see, if there were a significant um, uh, problem with with iOS traffic blocking content, we would see that the lines after the 16th, which is when iOS 9 was released, um, would start to would start to um, drop outside of the confidence bands. And as you can see in this in this data set, there there, there has not been any meaningful change, um, no statistically significant change in the amount of traffic um, from iOS nine. And so, if you did see something, um, if you did see if you did see it fall out, the system would then go ahead and flag it with one of these dots um, as an anomaly, meaning that uh, something you know something might have happened there that was kind of interesting. Um, and then you could follow that up to see if it is localized just to iOS 9 or, uh, you know, or, or just to iOS devices or if it is something that is happening globally on the site. Um, if you do have Analytics Premium, you can go ahead and click on the dot, hit Analyze, and it will kick off a contribution analysis that will run through all of your reports and try to find out what, what was causing that anomaly. So that should give you a pretty good way to use some pretty advanced statistics to allow you to, to assess kind of that impact um, based on a predicted value of what iOS, con uh, iOS 9 traffic should be and iOS traffic should be and to see if, if there is any major change as devices upgrade to the new, to the new uh, operating system um, and the new, new browser on that operating system. Another way that we can do it, this one's a little bit less of a black box, but uh, I, I would argue that it's probably not a little bit less accurate as well, but it can be pretty helpful as you're as you're trying to look at this from multiple dimensions. Um, is in in the analysis workspace, we can actually create a uh, a prediction of what we think the metric should be um, based on other variables, and then um, and then compare the actuals versus that prediction. And so I want to kind of talk through how that would be done. So the first thing here is we need to find a good predictor of iOS traffic. Um, I've chosen a bunch of metrics that are interesting um, that I think might be might be useful. Um, here I have iOS Safari traffic, which is uh, useful, is the one I'm going to compare against. I have occurrences of non-iOS Safari hits, so that's um, Safari hits from from say the desktop uh, bra uh, operating system. I have iOS non-Safari browsers, so that would be other browsers on iOS devices, and then I have occurrences of, of Android. Uh, devices and so as you can see these metrics are on very different scales um, you know there's a lot more in in this site there's a lot more desktop traffic than there is uh, mobile traffic um, but it might be helpful as a predictor uh, if I were I could go through and run a bunch of correlations on on each of these to see which ones are the most highly correlated 
Um, you can also normalize the data and analysis workspace by clicking on the normalization setting in the uh, in the gear of the visualization. And what this does is this puts everything, um, moves everything onto the same scale. And so then I can turn these, these different visualizations off and then start to compare them one by one to see if I can find one that matches the most closely to the, uh, to the, the data set that I'm interested in. And so if we go here and look at um, say Android, that one looks like it probably matches the most closely. Um, this data set's pretty spiky. Uh, I've seen a lot of other data sets where the, the Android al follows almost precisely what the, the, the trend of what your uh, Safari traffic is. Um, so once I, if for the definitions of all of these segments, you can go ahead and check out the blog. Again, there's a link in the description. Um, and I've, we've got all of the segment definitions um, for the different metrics, and then we've decided to use occurrences, which is the which is basically uh, hits uh, from those devices. Once you have that, once you've decided which metric you want to use, um, and you can use you can try other ones other than these, but once you've decided which one you want to use, you can go ahead and then um, base your prediction off of that off of that metric. And so, if we go here to the next section, what I've done is I have um, created a, a control chart. And so in this, I, I've, got a I've got a set of confidence bands um, that I did. And so I have occurrences of Safari, um, which is the green line. And then I predicted the, the Safari traffic from the Android traffic using a, a linear regression. And again, you can find, the, de you can find the, the definition of that metric and how to create that metric on the blog. And then I, I calculated the mean of the Safari hits and then two standard deviations above and two standard deviations below and so that I can look at and see if things are progressing outside the bands. Um, so if I look at the table, I can expand this here and uh, we'll see that the table has, um, there we go, uh, the table's showing, you know, the, the by day, what, what the predicted value is here and then the mean and the standard deviations. Um, in this data set, I, again, I have, I have really, uh, really low data, but most of the time in, in, when you're looking at yours, the, you know, everything should be a clustered around a pretty tight band. And what, you, what you're looking for is you're looking for um, times when the, um, the actual occurrences of Safari go far below what the predicted is. Um, and if they fall outside of, the, outside of your, your two standard deviations, then what will happen is, uh, you know, then you can kind of know that this, there's probably something going on here. And if that happens after the 16th, it's very likely that that could be because of content blocking. Uh, as we've looked across a bunch of different customers and a bunch of different data sets using some of these techniques, we really haven't seen a, a, any significant drops or meaningful drops in, in traffic um, that are isolated just to Safari. We have seen, you know, somewhere that where the whole traffic on the site will drop for a little bit and then come right back up. But um, hopefully this gives you a good way to, to understand whether, whether or not uh, to be concerned with, with different traffic uh, variations, um, especially with some of the content blocking stuff in iOS 9. So what you're looking for, again, is something after the 16th that drops below what your expected norm is. We hope this helps, and we hope that, uh, that you know, as you... As you kind of look at it, that you'll that you'll be able to make uh, informed decisions about what to do, and and how to react to to some of the content blocking. But for the most part, we've seen up until this point that it has not been a big issue for most customers.